Welcome back to Homestead Aquarius. For new, my new subscribers, I'll be giving you a little bit of a backstory today. Um, I've got a little half acre piece of land here and I manage it in the most natural ways that I possibly can. One of the things that I do here is aquaponics. Um, I have a, at this point I'm going on my second year of aquaponics and what you're seeing here with these with these uh, stock tanks is natural water that has cycled over the course of a year. It's become natural. These are ponds now. I have all the normal pond life here. And for years, though, I have raised frogs, or I've helped nature raise frogs. And in this aquarium are many stages of their life cycle. I've got some free-swimming tadpoles in here, some eggs I put in here just yesterday, and they're about to bust out and become new tadpoles. I do this. Um, my philosophy is if I help nature, she's helping me back. And it's in an effort to keep my place natural as possible. And then one day, whenever I'm no longer here, someone else will be doing the same thing. Regenerative agriculture, permaculture. Um, these are the things that I believe in. And this is what my channel is about. Um, all things natural. There will be some other things. As you see, aquaponics is not really a natural process. Um, so there is man-made stuff. Um, that I do as well. I, I do a little tinkering and we're going to have some of that uh, Today what I'm going to do is This is one of the water sources that I put out. This is a bait bucket and Inside this is uh, an awful lot of tadpoles. There are a few eggs uh, They look like they 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 did not get fertilized there may be some in here that, that still will develop from an egg, but we have got tadpoles that are going to be released into my main tank right here. All right, this is my 300-gallon stock tank, and it's full of food for tadpoles. Okay, so let's just, let's just do a little bit of this release in here. We can get you in here, and you can maybe see some of the, some of the mini tadpoles that's coming out of here. Look at that. Now, each one of these is going to grow up, you know, at some point. Well, the ones, not all of them will. That's why I help out nature is because I love frogs. And they do a very good job when they're adults of eating bugs of all kinds in my garden. An adult frog will eat, on average, 100 uh, bugs a day. And I want to help them do that. Okay, enough about the daily frog. Now, <laughs> yesterday's video, I left out the very last clip. Uh, so, I promised, I promised something <laughs> yesterday. I've got a predator that likes to eat my tadpoles. So, I'll put that clip on at the end of this one. I meant for it to be yesterday. I apologize. And yesterday also, I had this. This uh, um, uh, passion flower that I needed to transplant out of here. I've tiptoed around it to keep from damaging it. And I've got something I'm going to show you today. And a natural, natural. I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put it. Now I know, so hang on. Okay. Now this is a methylene plum tree that I had. Um, I bought this several years ago, probably, probably six years ago, seven years ago and planted it here at that time i had no sh no sunlight coming in here i had all trees this plum tree and a pear tree back there stayed in continual shade well this is a european species of plum it's susceptible to what's called black knot fungus and you may have seen that on some of your trees I'm going to show you a little bit of something. Now, this, this plum tree has the black knot fungus endemic to it. That means it's throughout the whole tree. I have removed everything down in preparation to getting rid of the trunk and totally gutting it. But as soon as I do that, I'm going to have to uproot all kinds of stuff in here that I've got growing that I don't want to do that with. 
I've come up with another solution for this. Um, before I do that, let me show you something. Maybe you have some black knot fungus showing up on your plum tree or your peach tree. Any type of stone fruit is generally susceptible to it. Now I do have some native Chickasaw plums here and they are very resistant to black knot fungus. But any of our introduced species, our European species, um, they, they are very much not wild things and not as strong. And so they get attacked. Uh, if you've got some that just shows up on like a branch or your leaves, you can prune those off immediately. Remove them from your property, burn them, whatever. Don't, don't compost them. They need to be destroyed. Uh, those spores are very hardy and they'll, they'll continue to spread. Don't work on it in the rain, don't work, or don't work on it when everything is wet, because that's when it likes to spread its spores. Um, so pruning off infected branches can help you, and then using uh, approved uh, fungicides, or what I would do is use natural fungicides, um, uh, like a neem oil or um, hydrogen peroxide. There are many things, and I'll let you figure out what works for you on that for fungicides. But let's pretend that you've got um, a little spot that shows up, you know, like let's say right here. Now well, let's say right here, okay? I don't have a good spot to show you this. So I'm gonna take this charcoal and we're gonna act like this is a little infected place. I already removed all my best examples, okay? If you've got black knot fungus showing up and it's not something that you can prune and remove like these branches are, you're just gonna take out your knife. Take out your knife and go around, go around the spot that's infected, okay, with the fungus. You wanna take like about a half an inch, well about an inch you don't want to you don't want to play games with it okay you want to get a good section of the bark around the infected area and you want to shave it just just get rid of it okay just like that just cut in there shave it down and get rid of it take the pieces of bark and burn them Throw them away. It's really best to burn them if you can. But however you do it to get it away from your, your other trees, and your property is the best. But, you know, take about an inch, an inch away from it. That should be enough to uh, away from the uh, infected part. And um, about three or four inches below it, you know, and that will that'll remove that infected part. And then go over it with the fungicide like this right here you know you can you can do things like that for um you know small areas if you can't just prune it off but this i had to take drastic measures with because it it's it's completely consumed by the fungus the fungus typically doesn't kill the tree but it does open up these massive wounds throughout so that other diseases can come in there and cause it to rot away. Um, it's pretty much a death sentence. But I was gonna remove it, but I thought of something. I'm going to continue using this tree for a little while and I'm gonna fix it to where the fungus is not growing and this is still useful for me. I'm gonna make do with what I have and get creative here. So y'all hang on. Before I get started, uh, doing what I'm going to do to transform that. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things. There are a lot of people that are seeing permaculture, hugaculture. Um, they're, they're finding new things out there that they've never heard of. So let me, let me bring up some, some points. When we're talking about permaculture and polyculture, um, monoculture, all right, let's say that this, this plum tree wasn't just sitting here by itself and there were that I that I went out and bought a hundred plum trees all of them the same kind okay and planted them close together that black knot fungus when it infects one of them 
it is going to infect every plum tree that you have. And it'll be so fast, it'll make your head spin. Every one of your trees will become infected. Okay? That is what happens with monoculture growing systems. You have all of your species planted, you know, real close together. And they're all infected very easily. Whatever predator is, um, is munching on them, they'll have an endless food supply right there for them. They can just go from one to the next. But if you go with a polyculture method, okay, uh, poly meaning many, if you go with planting uh, things interspaced with each other, okay, many different species as you go through your garden, not have all your tomatoes in one place, not have all your beans, um, it will introduce little, basically islands, okay, uh, each one of your plants or grouping of plants will become its own island away from other um, of its own species is getting attacked. Um, I'm sure that there's many people that wish in these last few months that they had their own little private island away from the troubles of the mainland. Okay? Now see, that is what, that's the beauty of polyculture in your gardens. Whether it's uh, your regular garden beds, you know, or your permaculture growing areas, you know, your food forest. Don't clump things up together. Uh, have them inter interplanted, okay? Use a polyculture method. Method. I won't go into all of that, but I, I will mention those things and let you go find more. Um, another thing here, along with that, now some of you don't know, this is my little uh, red mulberry, native red mulberry nursery. Uh, I saved some seeds out last year, one year ago. Uh, they remained in my refrigerator after I cleaned them up and, and, and dried them and everything. They were in there for a year, <clears throat> a whole year. And then I came out here and planted them, planted them right here. I got them started in, um, in some nice potting soil that didn't have anything else in it to come up. And so I knew that everything that come up would be a baby mulberry tree. That's a native red mulberry tree, species that's endemic here to uh, mostly uh, the eastern side of, of North America. Um, and see, the thing is, I've got them here because I know that the spores that have affected, you know, the fungus that's infected this plum tree, they won't hurt the mulberries. Completely different kind of tree. I would not want to put any kind of uh, uh, weak... Um, uh, like uh, a new cultivar of a, of a plum tree here or a peach or any other kind of stone fruit because I will increase my chances of that one being infected by the disease. Okay, so different species brings you strength to your garden, interplanted. I know that's, I'm getting wordy here, so I'll stop now, but look up some of those uh, keywords and see what you can find out for yourself. A lot of people already know this information, but we come to it at different times in our life. I, there'll be people that's never grown a thing, and there are people that have been gardening for decades. So I'm trying to cover the bases of anyone who may be watching. Now let me take care of this tree. One of the problems that I face with my natural gardening methods is I have to put up with all these icky Icky worms, these great big, icky, stinky, nasty worms. Look at these. Oh, they're so nasty. Yeah. So, if you if you don't want these in your garden, you know, or if, just don't do something else. You know, don't be natural. Those things are nasty, nasty earthworms. <laughs> I've got some in here that look like little snakes. I'm digging out a. Nice big hole to um, uh, transplant my passion flower. I'm going to use this tree. Uh, I've skinned all the bark from all around this plum tree. That's going to effectively kill any more growth up here and basically kill the whole tree except for suckers that's going to come up from the bottom. When they do, I'll trim them back. Let me get this hole finished up. 
Do you see what I see? <laughs> I've got it transplanted over there now. But we're looking through, um, I forgot to mention, this little tray is what I used to uh, uh, start my little mulberries in. Uh, this was, um, this had a cardboard liner that I made for it. I put potting soil directly into this, filled it up, and then put my seeds in there for them to grow. And then I brought it over here after they come up and uh, planted them into the, you know, just let it sit here onto the soil and made a border for it. I didn't want you to think that I just planted them right here in, in, in this, which would have been fine. It would have been fine, but I wanted to clear that up. And there's another, another great big old fat <clears throat> earthworm that is just icky. So we'll let him get down there and do his icky things in this dirt right here. Now, the plug that I took for that uh, passion flower is big. I told y'all about that yesterday. Get as much of the soil um, as you can. The bigger, the better. You don't want to mess with the roots. Um, I'm going to water it in good and, and keep it watered. And it's going to grow right up this the trunk of this um, uh, dying but still in place plum tree. Now that right there, I could go ahead and whittle it down and whittle all the bark off of it. I'm not going to do that. It's not necessary. Now, what I'm showing you here is not proper technique, you know, in every situation or whatever. What I'm showing you is a different way of thinking. Nature, you know, what I have done and what nature has done in this situation <clears throat> has offered me... You know, because of the way I'm looking at things, it's like, hey, I can reuse this. <clears throat> I don't have to destroy it. I can use this to solve a problem. There are many things in, um, in your life that may look like it has nothing good about it. But if you look at it in another way, maybe you can do something with it, um, change it, um, make whatever that energy that took, you know, save some of that. This tree will eventually rot away. I won't have another stone fruit in this area. And for right now, it's going to be an excellent uh, scaffold for this um, passion flower to grow up. And it's going to create me shade, which I very much need right here. This plum tree offered me some shade, so I'm going to regrow some shade. Once this uh, gets settled in, it's going to take off like a rocket and grow up here. And then I'm going to bring it over and do all kinds of neat things with it. And uh, it's going to start spreading. And as it spreads, that'll be fine. I'll dig those up and transplant them somewhere else that I want them. Because it's my place, like it's your place. And you can do pretty much what you want to do. Um, I had a little bonus there <clears throat> that I left with the plug. Uh, that's a big, uh, uh, well, a nice, nice, healthy uh, broadleaf plantain. Just gonna let that be there because I want it in here too. Uh, broadleaf plantain is a wonderful plant, wonderful natural plant. So um, we've got uh, um, a maypop, which is a common name for them, passion flower, um, and a plantain I just transplanted. Now that's that's a little comfrey right there. I've got daylilies in here which are edible. The the flowers. Um, I have got uh, um, uh, walking onions in here. I've got wild garlic. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, many different species. Polyculture in a natural way. Okay, so I know this has been a long video, but uh, there are a few things that needed to be said. So I tell you what, I, I really appreciate each and every one of you watching, and uh, I'll say goodbye. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, she's drinking the tadpoles. No, baby. <laughs> Don't drink the tadpoles. Oh. This dog. Mmm. Well, I guess that could be another Daily Frog episode. <laughs>